Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is Tend to Life where we talk all things true crime. So if you're checking out the channel for the first time, welcome. I hope you appreciate today's case coverage and the way that we approach it here on this channel. And if you do, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. A free way to show support and that way you will see new videos as they get posted. And for all of my returning Tend to Lifers, as always, thank you for joining today. So happy to have you here, and guys, today's going to be a tough one. I mean, they're all tough, but today we're kind of talking about one of our own, or one who we thought was one of our own, I guess I should say. Now, you guys have already, obviously, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, and you, I'm sure you've already heard what we are going to be talking about. I was away on my anniversary trip for about a week, and then I had some stuff with family, so I haven't had a chance to really get around and record this, and so... Now it's my first day back in the studio, and I know so many of you guys have not only been requesting my point of view on this, but you've wanted me to address it, and so this is, you know, first up on my docket and what I'm recording. Now, we'll see how long it takes YouTube to approve it, given the circumstances, but that's a different conversation for a later time, so let me just get comfy while we talk here, guys. Um, and so if you haven't guessed by now, we're going to be talking about Jared from Adventures with Purpose, and... It's interesting because I did have him on my channel during the Kylie Rodney case. So many people, you know, loved Adventures with Purpose, followed Adventures with Purpose, as did I. I personally donated to Adventures with Purpose when Kylie Rodney was first recovered and supported their mission, which still wholeheartedly, I support what members of Adventures with Purpose do as far as getting answers for cold cases, helping loved ones get closure. That in itself, the mission, I should say, in itself is incredible. And even when I made my donation, it wasn't to a, it wasn't meant for a specific person, obviously. It was meant towards that cause. Now, obviously, so many people have resigned, and we're going to get into all the details soon here. But I hope that some new branch of this, you know, gets peeled off or started, or that these men who have such great talents with the diving and the recovery start their own thing, just because... The cause itself is still so great and so needed. We see how little resources so many departments have out there, and we have seen so many families through their cases, and especially with the Kylie case where resources are deployed and they still can't recover these loved ones. And then, you know, this group comes in and with their skill set and their technology and their, you know, resources and equipment, they're able to do that. So, Hopefully, there is some element, and who knows what that is, where it'll still be able to continue in the future without this person. Now, it's been hard for everybody, and I think that's why so many people have been asking me to cover this case. Because if we've ever asked ourselves if we have a favorite actor, singer, influencer, TikToker, YouTube, professional athlete, or celebrity... Most of us have one, and when we hear bad things about them, it sucks, and we feel like we know them, and we only want what's best for them. Maybe it's finding out one of your favorite actors was horrific to staff or fans. I remember just a couple years ago, there were several reports that Ellen DeGeneres had created a horrible toxic work culture for ex-employees, and then they came out and spilled the tea in tabloids. Or maybe if you're a sports fan and you remember when the Houston Astros were caught in, you know, an alleged cheating scandal for their World Series championship in 2017, it's just such a weird feeling. Because even though we don't know these people personally, or maybe we've had them on panel or things like that, it just kind of feels like a betrayal and letdown of some sort. And so, like I mentioned, the case we're going to be going over today feels just like that, but maybe even worse. In that case, like I'm sure you have guessed again, is about Adventures with Purpose, a very popular search and recovery team and YouTube channel that helps solve cold cases all over the country. Now, while I'm sure you have seen tons of videos out there so far on this case with panel guests some of the women coming forward and speaking out, documents. I want to go a little bit back to the root of it. Who was Jared when this all happened? What was his life? How did we get to where we are here? Not saying there's any excuse. Obviously, there are no excuses for what has allegedly gone down. And I'm saying allegedly a lot in this video, guys, because from what I've seen and been told, Jared can get very, you know, happy with his lawsuits. So I'm just trying to cover all bases here since technically you are innocent until found guilty, but 
let's just give a big eye roll there. But anyways, so many videos have come out about this case and I'm sure you've seen them. But what I wanted to do is kind of kind of go back to the foundation of it, talk through everything in the childhood, some of the family dynamics in that or that have allegedly been called out and then kind of work our way through it and really just give everybody, you know, a comprehensive overview of what's going on in this case, even though new details are, you know, breaking every single day and just kind of talk through it. I'm getting comfy here on my couch. I'm sitting, you know, crisscross applesauce with you right now and we're just gonna talk through this together. So guys, let's jump right in. Sense of life with Annie Elise starts right now. Jared has been a certified scuba diver since 2006. As a self-professed scuba diving treasure hunter with a purpose, Jared's love of diving and treasure hunting in lakes and rivers led to the beginning of Adventures with Purpose, a company based out of Bend, Oregon. His goal in creating Adventures with Purpose was to clean up the waterways locally in his home state. Adventures with Purpose also created a YouTube channel to document their searches for entertainment purposes and to serve as a public service announcement that the ecosystems and the waterways needed a much greater cleanup effort. As of 2019, Jared and his team removed approximately 7,000 pounds of trash and found a plethora of items, even some, you know, hidden treasures, as some would call it, like a lantern from the 1800s, 368 pairs of sunglasses, 53 cell phones, and several laptops and wallets. One of the most notable discoveries was an urn that a family had accidentally lost in the water before getting ready to spread the ashes of their loved ones. Jared identified the family from a name inscribed on the urn and later returned it to the family. We're back down here at the River Bend Park here in Bend, Oregon. The weekend is over, guaranteed to find some new treasures for sure. And even if we don't, guaranteed to find some more trash. Many goodies today. You're not gonna believe like everything we pulled out of here. Oh, I found a, a, a genie in a bottle, Kara. I don't, actually don't know what it is. There's something in the bag here. It might be weed. Yeah, it could be weed. We, we do live in Bend. No, the, it's someone's ashes. Oh, is it ashes? I think so. Good news, everybody. We found the family and the owner of Ted Foley. They're super excited. I've heard that Ted was like love the limelight so this is like Ted's last 15 minutes of fame anyway we're gonna package Ted up right now we're gonna take him over to Bree is who we're taking Ted to we're gonna meet up with her on the exact bridge uh, where she can tell us the rest of her story we ended up meeting up with the Bree um, who was Ted's significant other at the time as well as Valerie over here <laughs> is uh, Ted's daughter. Most of Adventure With Purpose's footage is documented and published on YouTube. They had a small but quickly growing fan base. One day while diving for items, Jared unexpectedly came across a vehicle in Portland. The car was about 40 feet underwater. When the team went in to recover the car, they accidentally found two more cars. And when they went in for those cars, they found three more. Adventures With Purpose then decided if they were finding these vehicles by accident, perhaps they should start looking for cars in the water intentionally. So later in 2019, a missing persons family contacted AWP to see if they could help them. The family believed that their loved one was in a vehicle underwater. AWP decided to take on the challenge and see if they could help. During this dive, AWP found the car and the remains of the missing person. After this discovery, more and more people started calling AWP to see if the team could come help them get answers for their cold cases related to missing persons. So this led to exponential growth in Adventures with Purpose, their team, their YouTube channel, and expanded their reach to a national level. Now, at nearly 3 million subscribers on YouTube, well, maybe a little shy of that because I think some people are unsubscribing, Adventures with Purpose has helped recover 25 missing persons across the country since just 2019. 
And most recently, they received a ton of publicity for their role in the recovery of Kylie Rodney in Truckee, California. A mother is missing her 16-year-old daughter. Yeah, tomorrow marks two weeks since the Truckee teenager disappeared after attending a party at a campground. She was either hungover or just had a really rough day. She looked distressed. When do you think that this took place? He parked his van right here, facing that direction. Her vehicle was parked right over here. I have set a radius of 10 miles around Prosser Creek Reservoir. We're going to work hard. We are Stampede, Independence, Boca, and Prosser Creek all within that 10 mile range. I have just located in the corner of this cove here, a target that I cannot identify. 18 different agencies, over 19,000 man hours have been put into this. I'm a firm believer in second chances. However, some things don't deserve forgiveness. Taking the life of a 16 year old deserves zero forgiveness. There, you see that? Yeah, it doesn't make sense though. It's only 10 feet of water. We definitely have something man-made. This is her, you know, this means all hope is lost as far as her still being out there, her being found safe. What'd you want to say to Kylie tonight? I love her so, so much. So many people love you. And we're all looking and we're all we're trying so, so hard. And I'm so sorry we haven't found you yet, but we're not giving up and and um, and just hang in there, sweetie, because we're playing for you all. I don't want to find her. I, I want to be able to clear all this water and be able to tell the family she's not here. She's not here. Our job is to be here to find the where. Confirm. Confirm. I see the vehicle and the license plate. We have just found Kyle's vehicle over. So now that you kind of have an understanding of what Adventures with Purpose is, how they started, what they do. Let's go into what we're here to talk about today. Who is Jared Lysak and what is his background? Jared has a website where he talks about his upbringing at length in a bit of an autobiography manner. As of the recording of this video, the website has now been taken down, but I was able to see it before then. Now the website begins, I live my life as an open book with no skeletons. If someone wants to know something about me, just ask. I care about people and their feelings, always wanting to encourage and uplift. But know that if you ask me something, I will always be honest and direct. It may hurt your feelings at time, but know that I don't want to beat around the bush and you'll always know where I stand. It goes on to say, some of you may have found this page after researching my name, Jared Lysak, or Jared Ray Lysak, and want to determine if I am worthy of your trust, your friendship, your time, and or your business. We live in a digital age and I have nothing to hide. So sit back and let me share my story. I'll touch on my childhood, my marriage, my homeless experience, successes, failures, and yes, I will even share the time I was investigated by the SEC back in 2001. Now this website, like I said, has since been removed, but I find it very ironic that the premise of this entire introductory message is, I'm an open book, you can trust me, I'll tell you anything you wanna hear, the good, the bad, the ugly, I've got no skeletons in my closet, I'll even talk about the time I was investigated by the SEC back in 2001. But what's not mentioned in there? What's not mentioned is that he allegedly has family members and perhaps other people. What's not in there is that he claims to have suffered from similar behavior inflicted on himself at a young age. I'm not trying to be super technical here, guys, but that would be the definition of a skeleton in your closet. That would be the definition of not being truthful and forthcoming. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we all have skeletons in our closet, but if you were trying to boast what a trustworthy person you are and how you are being so transparent and forthcoming with who you are as a person and all of your skeletons in your closet, then you're maybe having the wrong approach, my guy. Maybe it's time to self-reflect a little bit, unless you are just a true narcissist, which ugh, we're gonna get there. So let's talk more about Jared, guys. Jared was born on September 16th, 1975. He's now 47 years old and comes from a broken home with multiple marriages for both parents. By nine, he was in the foster care system. His grandparents eventually raised Jared when they took him in into their home in Utah. Jared had said, this is the time in my life in which I learned proper hygiene, how to cook, 
clean, iron, how to love and be loved. I can't say I was always good for them, nor did I always stay out of trouble, but with them, I don't think I would have had the fighting chance for who I have become today. I thank and love my grandparents for the chance, the change, and the opportunities they provided me. Again, it's like you hear all of these statements and it's a little bit haunting and jarring that somebody can be like saying all of this with such conviction, knowing what we know now. In his later teen years, Jared went to live with his dad while his dad was in between marriages. Jared said that soon after, his dad remarried again to wife number four and basically felt like his dad had put him on the back burner while he focused on his new family. Jared lived at friends' houses, just going back and forth to wherever. He eventually dropped out of high school. Then Jared moved to Granada in the Bahamas. Jared had said that he ran out of money and soon became homeless, sleeping in parks, bushes, and hotel stairwells. He even said he sold perfume door-to-door, but that he never seemed to make enough, leaving him eating at soup kitchens, wandering hotel halls, looking for room service leftovers, and yes, also saying that he had eaten out of garbage cans. Again, all of this information out there in a public way to where if you hadn't known anything about the allegations we're going to get into, it truly does feel like a rags to riches story of sorts. Came from a very rough upbringing, the foster care system, overcame homelessness. Now he has a successful business where he's giving back and he's helping families, giving them closure, also earning a great living. You would think that, you know, this sounds like the perfect lifetime movie, the perfect story or Hallmark movie, I guess, not lifetime because, you know, Um, but that's not at all what it was. So Jared eventually returned back to the U.S. and re-enrolled in high school. There he met his high school sweetheart. After graduating in 1995, the two got married that summer. Jared is still married and now has two daughters. He and his family live in Bend, Oregon. Jared mentions that he has a third daughter from a high school fling before meeting his wife. According to Jared, when the daughter was around five years old, she pushed for a paternity test. The test confirmed that he was the biological father and was excited to have this daughter in his life. However, the other father raising the daughter put a stop to this. And Jared had said her father became vindictive and swore that he would never get a chance in helping raising her. He said that he can't say that I blame him for what he did in keeping her from him. Mm, Okay. Later on, Jared says the daughter tracked him down and he eventually had somewhat of a relationship with her. However, according to Jared... She wanted answers, but was never satisfied with his responses. She felt that he didn't try and fight hard enough for her despite the stack of court documents that he had been going through for several years, and the relationship was ultimately severed. In 2001, Jared had some issues with the SEC exchange, which is the Securities Exchange Commission, and according to the SEC's own website, the SEC entered judgments against Jared and his brother Byron. In the complaint, the SEC alleged that Jared and his brother operated a stock-picking website, TNTstock.com, and would issue stock recommendations on the website to its subscribers. And at the time, they had around 13,000 subscribers. After the recommendations were released, most of the time, the price and trading volume of the recommendations increased, of course. The complaint also stated that Jared and his brother posted false information on Yahoo message boards. Some false information said that TNT held at most 5,000 shares of any of the stocks that it recommended and sold shares 30 minutes after any releases. According to the SEC, however, in reality, the brothers owned more than 20,000 shares and sold most of the shares within 30 minutes. They were alleged to have made upwards of $195,000 from this scheme. The SEC also said that the defendants did not admit or deny allegations, but consented to the entry of judgments and were later ordered to pay a fine for the $195 that they profited with. So in the years after, but before starting Adventures with Purpose, Jared faced bankruptcy twice. He also had some business ventures in real estate and a media company that he started in 2017. Jared's website ends by saying, In the end, I'm just like anybody else. I put my pants on one leg at a time. I will have bad days and may even raise my voice. Just give me a quick nap and I'm usually all right after that. Whatever direction you take in life, I truly wish you a world of success in business and personal relationships. Take good care of your spouse, your children, and the friendships worth keeping. 
pay it forward, and do your best to leave a good legacy for your family. (laughs) Ironic, right? Let me say that again. Do your best to leave a good legacy for your family. In the beginning of November of this year, Jared, the co-founder and owner of Adventures with Purpose, was indicted in Utah on two felony charges of RAPE with a child. Now, any sort of sexual assault on a child is obviously a very serious manner, but so are false allegations and accusations. Again, so I want to be very clear here, the indictment offenses are alleged and have not been proven yet in court. However, in light of the allegations, I wanted to come on here, make a statement, make a video. I've seen your comments and DMs asking if I would cover this, and I wanted to wait until a little more information came out and until I got back into my studio, but I just really want to talk about this, even though, again, it's not proving guilt yet. Read between the lines, guys. You know what I'm trying to do, right? You get what's going on here. And so the crime that's being accused is absolutely depraved and heinous. So it is not a topic that I can remain silent on, and I do not stand by or condone any sort of this behavior in any way. That being said, everyone deserves the opportunity to present their side of this story, so please do your research. But for me, I have a firm belief on where I stand, what I believe to be true, where my loyalty lies in this. So do your own research, come to your own opinion, but I have formed mine, and with that, until there is a resolution, until we have concrete information telling us one thing or another, I will not be promoting or featuring AWP on my channel whatsoever. I have also privated that video. I will not put that person anywhere on my channel. To be frank, guys, I was absolutely floored and just sickened when I heard the news of Jared's indictment. I think it's safe to say that we all were, right? So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that together. The criminal charges were filed on November 4th, 2022 in San Pete County Court in Utah. Jared is accused of RAPE of a female relative between the age of 9 and 10 years old. Both incidents allegedly occurred in 1992. Authorities allege that Jared was 7 years older than this victim when this happened. And in one incident, Jared allegedly this child in her bedroom. The second incident alleges a similar incident occurred when they were at the grandparents' home in Utah. Those same grandparents that he was thanking for raising him so well, giving him every opportunity, creating a loving home, he was allegedly RAPEing a young girl, 9 or 10 years old, that is his relative in that house. Sorry, guys. Like, what? So, of course, everybody goes to Reddit when this all happens, and a Reddit thread was created on Adventures with Purpose whenever news of this indictment began to break. The author of the original post titled, It is Official, Jared Has Been Indicted by the State of Utah on Two Counts, filed 11-3-2022. It included some screenshots of emails also allegedly between Jared and this alleged victim. Now, I wouldn't usually include something like this in any video because it's not hard to create fake posts at all, and Reddit can be sometimes a little sketchy. However, the alleged victim has now confirmed that these emails were, in fact, between her and Jared. So let's start with email number one. It says, do you feel better as a person doing things like this? Does that make you feel like less of a child blank monster parading around in human skin? There is no forgiveness for what you did to me in my home in Utah grandma and grandpa's house in las vegas and right above grandma and grandpa's head in their very own truck the rest of the family is just as much to blame as you because they didn't turn you in when they knew better and i was just a child and did not know better and yet you're still welcomed at family get-togethers or like my grandfather's funeral all the while in the parking lot getting ready to get out of the car and attend i seen your face and became so violently ill i couldn't even attend i had to drive down the street to cvs and watch it all via zoom all these people may be calling you a hero and saying that you're doing such great things but we both know the truth about you and you're obviously not ashamed of your past but i also am not ashamed of my past and i have a voice and i use it as much as i possibly can your secrets are not hidden. A very powerful and bold email, to say the least. So, 
this was sent to the support email account for Adventures with Purpose. And Jared then allegedly responds in this second email saying, I am so very sorry for the things that we cannot change. It is unfortunate that the Lysek and Juaza Juhas's, sorry guys, I hope I'm saying that right, lineage experienced the shit that you, I, and many other cousins were brought into. Like yourself, I was once a victim by multiple people both in and out of the family. It is unfortunate when families like ours experience, you know. Many of us cousins got together to acknowledge what had happened in our youth and made a pact to put an end to it and to protect our children from anything like that ever happening to them. I have tried to apologize to you and to have an open conversation with you about it to answer any questions you may have. The first time that I apologize to you, I am sorry for the way that it was handled, for I was under the impression that your mother knew and that I felt it was appropriate at that time to have the conversation with both of you. I did not mean to embarrass you or catch you off guard. The second time that I tried was not to clear my own conscience, but to help you heal and help with any struggles you may have been having as many of us had to learn how to overcome and move forward. You essentially told me to go F myself and told me how I had embarrassed you the first time around. I am sorry. My understanding is that other cousins also have tried to have the same conversations with you. We are now all adults and it is healthy for us to acknowledge and address those unfortunate circumstances from our past in our child and adolescent years. While there is a lot of shit that has happened throughout my own life personally, from blank abandonment, growing up in foster care, and other shit along the way, I would not change a thing for it has made me who I am today. I cannot apologize for others for anything that has happened to you in your life, but I have done my best to acknowledge directly with you my own mistakes. I hold no secrets as to this with my own parents, my grandma and grandpa, with your mother, aunt, some names redacted, and my own wife and my children. I have even discussed publicly about my situation and the unfortunate shit that has happened within families. Do we pinpoint it to the lineage or do we pinpoint it to Mormonism? I do not have the answer. There is no way for me to understand the hatred and resentment that you must have for me over three decades later. I heard about your driving into the cemetery a few weeks later. Trust me, had I known that you had a desire to be there and that I was the only reason keeping you away, I would have 100% given up my time to do what I could to avoid the ceremony so that you would feel comfortable and have your time with grandma and the rest of the family. It is your decision and your choice if you ever want to accept my apology. I have made peace in my life with all the things bad, including this situation. If you ever want to discuss, I am always available to have that conversation with you, either in person or over the phone. Sincerely, Jared. Now we're going to get to a couple more emails in a second here, but I want to pause and say this. When I first read this exchange and when I first read that email particularly, I flew off the handles. Like, the gaslighting, the audacity. Within the first few sentences, he's not even taking any accountability of how she's feeling and what she's coming forward saying and her struggle. Literally, the second, no, the first sentence, I'm so sorry for the things that we cannot change. She, like, you're not acknowledging it. You're not making her situation and her voice real you're not validating her experience the next sentence it's unfortunate that the family lineage experienced the shit that you i and many other cousins were brought into pulling yourself into this automatically making yourself a victim again taking away her voice and her experience third sentence like yourself i was once a victim by multiple people both in and out of the family it's unfortunate when families like ours experience this this isn't about you, bro. She's emailing you because she's looking for healing. She's looking to get things off her chest. And literally within the first sentence, you flip it around, invalidating her experience, gaslighting her, calling yourself a victim, and making it about you. And then to have the freaking audacity to wrap the whole thing up by saying, I have made peace in my life with all bad things, including this situation good for you, bro. But once again, it ain't about you. Then this is where you get not only the like early indicator signs, in my opinion, of the gaslighting and the manipulation, but for sure the narcissism. And again, I'm not, you know, I'm not a doctor. I can't clinically say that. I don't have a degree in that. But like, 
this is just crazy to me. It, like the nerve of this person. So let's go on and read a couple more here. She responds and says, if you truly want to apologize, then pay for your actions. Walk into a police station with me and confess your actions. Get it on record and have yourself registered as the SO that you are. My only regret in life was not being as open about you and your abuse to anyone and everyone who would listen like I am now and turning you into the police like you should have been. I don't understand how you can try and get me to sympathize with you and your past issues. Not at all. It angers me twice as much to know that not only did you know firsthand the torture you were inflicting upon me because you experienced it yourself. That makes you an even bigger monster than I have even pictured in my mind. Absolutely disgusting. You're an emotional vampire. I noticed all the therapy terms you used in your message. Typical narcissism at its best. How somebody could ever come to peace with damaging such a young, innocent human being is beyond me. Proof of a completely broken mind assuming that there would be any kind of peace after those type of actions or that peace should even be deserved. You are a peed. Do not act like you were not old enough to know what you were doing to me during the ages that you were. You could have been tried as an adult at that age and should have been. And as to the comments about my life and things that have happened to me, I don't know who or why you're even discussing me with, but I can guarantee you that nobody really knows anything because just like your situation, I've kept my mouth shut until recently. And I don't talk to any of the family despite what others, as you say, cousins have come to you and said. So be a real man and turn yourself in and pay for your crimes or continue to be the small, sad, mental midget that couldn't keep his libido under control and blames it on his past. I mean, I gotta say props to this girl. She is just like unleashing here. And his response to that, you would think maybe if you're a good human and you have a shred of dignity, accountability, and remorse, you would say, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to make it about me. I'm not trying to invalidate your experience or take away your voice. That wasn't my intention. Nope, 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 nothing like that. Listen to this response. Unfortunately, your desire to have a 46-year-old male live the mistakes of a 12-year-old simply is not realistic. By the way, he was not 12 years old at the time, but we'll get there. Thank God we are not forever judged for our actions as youth, and I'm grateful that many of us cousins acknowledged and stopped those sins which happened to us and those sins we once committed as a result of grooming. It is healthy for you to now be open and talk about the past. You as a full-grown woman in your early 40s are to be commended for facing and standing up to those actions which happened to you in your past. Spread awareness and stop the cycle as we cousins within the family have for our own children and grandchildren. Protect your own children and grandchildren as we have to help the world become a better place. We live in a society that acknowledges the mistakes made in the past, accepting those who have proven to change. My life holds no secrets and everyone in my office feels your pain and has seen this email string for I don't filter my emails. That's a key factor here, guys. He's saying everyone in his office is reading this. And this is from back in February. They know me for the man that I am and not the mistakes of a 12-year-old, not 12, who learned to recognize the cycle and break the cycle as many of us cousins did. Again, trying to like absolve himself of all of this. It's sick. You were younger and not yet ready to accept my apology and recognize the steps we made for future generations to protect them. I hope you can one day find forgiveness and peace. Feel free to have any last words, for I will not respond to any further attacks as to my character today based on those actions as a youth. Should you desire a healthy adult conversation as to the past, I'm open to helping you through the acceptance and growth that many of us faced and have dealt with. If you have not done so already, I may suggest reaching out to blank and lean on her for guidance as one closer to your age who within the family has gone through this with us. I'm not sure your relationship with aunt, redacted, or your mother, but I'd suggest leaning on them as well for they experienced much of the same in their youth. Sincerely, Jared. Now guys, I have read these emails before, but even reading them again right now for like, you know, the millionth time, it like makes my blood boil all over again. It's just the lack of accountability for me. So she then responds and says, let's do some math here, calling him out. Because remember, he tries to call out that he was 12 twice in that email. I was 9 or 10 when living in Utah, and you forced me to have sex with you on my bathroom floor upstairs. You are six or so years older than me. That makes you older than 12. 
in Las Vegas at Grandma and Grandpa's house, you were living there and you had your own car, a Volkswagen Beetle, and you were driving it when it ran. So please stop making it sound as if you were a young child during the time you were, you know, assaulting me. Maybe you started that young with the others, but as you are not willing to face your wrongdoing in a proper fashion, then that is on you and you alone. Anyone who supports you and your sick delusional fantasy of forgiving yourself for the pain and suffering you caused and willingly and knowingly caused not only a child but your own family member. But I do appreciate you admitting it all in writing. And then he responds, you are welcome. I hope it helps your healing process. So guys, if that's Jared's real response to when his cousin says, thank you for admitting it, I can't handle how he says, you're welcome. I hope this helps in your healing process. How pompous is that? There is also an admission from Jared's end that this topic was discussed among the cousins and that same acts had been done to Jared and other people in the family and that they had moved on and forgiven him. He alleges that he has no secrets in his entire family and has publicly discussed the situation and unfortunate shit that he calls it that has happened within families. So the author of the Reddit post said that the connection between the emails and it being her cousin was made after the cousin had posted to a victim's survivor group. So let me pull this up on the screen. Please beware, I had no idea until recently when I had the unfortunate chance of coming across a video of my childhood R.A.P.ist Jared Lysak, my cousin, yes, my own flesh and blood, and I wasn't his only family victim, and honestly, who knows how many others there are out there that aren't part of our family. Due to his diving group, Adventures with Purpose, this man is regarded as a hero and an angel, and he is invited into people's homes with welcome loving arms. He has been through the systems, CPS, the Mormon Church, therapies, and so many more as you'll be able to tell from his writing. But I do know for a fact that he did not start with me and he did not stop with me either. He at one point, like you will read, did verbally admit to my mother that he had done this to me. Obviously skimming over the more horrific parts like his attempted of her daughter directly above her, my grandfather and grandmother's heads by the way, and the fact that at the age 9 to 10 he gave me an STD from RAPing me and I had no idea so I had to go through the trauma of my mother and grandmother finding white stuff in my underwear and treating me horribly and questioning me and punishing me for the problem when he told her she started crying and hugged him and told him that she forgave him she never turned him into the police and I never got any form of help or anybody to talk about it we went out to go travel on the carnival which made me unable to be anywhere for more than a week which meant that I couldn't say anything to anyone My own mother protected him and never even talked to me about it other than to tell me she had been blank and that her story was worse than mine. He finally admitted it in writing because he and the family are all very sure that the statute of limitations has passed and he's safe so now he can. But just so you're aware and can keep your daughter safe, be very careful around this man. His business is in Bend, Oregon, and it goes on to give a couple more details. And right now, the cousin wants her identity to be private. So that's why we're going to keep some things blank here. Now, in the emails, Jared asked, do we pinpoint it to the family lineage or do we pinpoint it to Mormonism? And then he says, you know, I do not have an answer. So whenever I was doing more research on Jared and his background, I didn't see anything on and any information on whether he is still practicing the Mormon faith or not but I'm guessing that he means at one point the LDS church was a part of his life. There also seems to be a hint of generational trauma that Jared is referencing, but there isn't information or details regarding those claims publicly available yet. I mentioned a little bit ago how shocking this information was to find out, and even after rereading these emails, I am seriously at just a loss for words. On one hand, we have to remember that yes, these are all alleged claims, alleged emails, And with charges of this magnitude, it worries me to comment a little bit further because I know that, you know, this person likes to file lawsuits and he's definitely not denying it if this is him in these emails. It's interesting that in these emails, Jared allegedly states that the whole Adventures with Purpose team knew and had access to these emails and that his wife knew and his kids know. So did any of them seriously all know or did they just not care? What's the truth here? And if his wife knew, how on earth is he still allowed around his children? 
So Jared's sister, Jessica, had publicly posted on Facebook, on her Facebook page, backing up the cousin's claims and saying that she, too, was a survivor. She said victim, but I'm going to say survivor here. Now remember, Jared is only indicted on charges for his cousin, and while I fully support survivors, victims, I have to say, again, that this is all alleged. Here she posts, Feels like I'm living with a target on my back, but I'm used to it. Been standing up for what's right my whole life while others are put on pedestals for doing harm to others. I appreciate the person that is standing up for what's right as well, as I hope this will protect innocent children. We weren't protected, but we're trying to help others. And in case you're not aware, yes, this is my brother. Changed my name to my real name on Facebook a couple of months ago, so I'd be easier to get a hold of due to this. In another post in September, I got an order today to deliver to Jared on the outskirts of Renman, Oregon. Delivery instructions said to go through the green gate and go to the house. When I pulled up to the electric gate, it started closing, so I parked and got out of my vehicle with the order as I saw a man in the distance walking up the driveway. It was my older brother, Jared, who started screaming, F you, Jessica. No, Jared, you can't F me anymore, you psycho piece of shit. You knew who had your order and who was driving all the way out there. Don't be mad at me for supporting people who want to put you away. Be mad at yourself for the things that you've done to others. I might have been the first one that you assaulted, but I was far from the last. You're not a hero like many think. You're a narcissistic piece of crap that is about to go down for your actions. I'm not afraid of you like the others are. You can't brainwash me like you have done to others. You made your bed, and now it's time for you to toss and turn and lose some sleep over your actions. It's only a matter of time that the truth of Jarek Lysak is revealed. Thanks for showing your face today. Now we know where to send the police. In another post from a month earlier, first message I received this morning was from the son of the first adult that RAPE'd me. It seems as if the family is getting scared and they are now trying to slander me and scare me into keeping my mouth shut again. It's not going to work. Our family is sick and I'm not a kid that you can throw to the wolves anymore. I'm a wolf now and I will not back down. In another post, it says, if you have been assaulted by one of their family members, you are not alone. Utah has lifted their statue of limitations. Time to speak up. Here she posts, my heart hurts so bad. Very emotional to hear that there are a lot of people surviving the wrath of Jared Lysak. Yes, I was by him. Yes, others were by him. Yes, he made money by exploiting the pain and suffering of grieving families while acting like a saint. I know what kind of pain I am in and have been in for quite some time. It's so hard to sleep due to the emotional scars I am left with. That being said, I cannot even begin to imagine how painful it must be to have someone be in full control and use me as a puppet for money, power, fame, while I am grieving the loss of a loved one. What type of person does that? People who have passed on are not treasure. The stealing of emblems off of vehicles should tell anyone who has a psych degree that this man is capable of anything. I'm going to try to get some sleep as protection is in place tonight and will hopefully help. I'll be praying myself to sleep tonight, praying for my entire family, praying for Jared's wife and his family. I'll pray for all the AWP guys and their families. I'll pray for the families and friends whose loved ones were rescued by AWP. I'll pray for everyone he's ever harmed in any way. I'll pray for justice. I will pray for my brother. After Jessica publicly spoke out, Jared's cousin commented from her confirmed Reddit account that whenever she had mentioned that he had done this to another family member, she wasn't talking about Jessica. So again, we don't know if this is true, but does that mean that there are more victims than just these two girls? The news of the indictment became public on November 4th, which was a Friday. So over the weekend, nobody from AWP spoke out or said a word, which pretty much drove kind of everybody insane. Rumors were circulating about NDAs being signed and there being tons of reasons for this. Jared's sister and cousin appeared on a couple of live streams and did speak out. At this point, there was still no absolute concrete confirmation of the email's validity other than the cousin's word, but their stories and what they said online seemed to be pretty believable. And this seemed very bad for Jared. So was he really not going to say anything publicly? Was anyone from AWP going to say anything publicly? I mean, come on. It feels like a situation where you have to. Who knew about this? He's saying you guys knew about this. Did you know and are you going to stick up for him? Are you trying to hide it? Are they going to say none of it's true? What was the future of AWP? Nobody was talking. Even more frustrating was the fact that literally all of the mainstream media, except the Sun, did not say a word either. It's seriously mind-blowing and annoying. If news outlets were reluctant to cover something just because it's negative about someone who had been part of a group that did so much good in the past, I get that. 
but this is now an entirely different conversation. The court documents were available online. So what could possibly be the holdup in people reporting on it? Because we know every mainstream media resource and source out there when they found Kylie reported on it. You know, literally, you name it, and they were on it. And they were doing, you know, their little press tour, everything. So now what? Everybody's just going silent? Why? Because the allegations haven't been proven yet? You guys talk about things that haven't been proven all the time. Like, ugh, God, what's going on here? So finally, after that weekend, team members, ex-team members, and other dive teams affiliated with Adventures with Purpose came forward. Sam, who goes by Sam Sam the Adventure Man, who was actually the co-founder of AWP with Jared, had all eyes on him when the news came out. People wanted to know what Sam thought. When Sam left AWP over a year ago, he posted a video on his YouTube channel briefly discussing why he left. The video was private, but Sam made it public again after the indictment news. This, of course, had us wondering if he was going to make it public again as just a way to distance himself from him and kind of say like, hey, yo, I left a year ago and, you know, here's what's going on. Keep me out of this. And it was kind of likely his way of saying something without actually saying something. And keep in mind, this video was from October in 2021. And I can't have that on my conscience. Um, this isn't easy for me to do. This isn't something that I've really wanted to have to do, um, but I know that it needs to be done. Uh, as I'd stated, you know, I, I couldn't go on uh, with my conscience knowing that, you know, I had the power to say something and I didn't. Um, so I, I want you guys to bear with me as I struggle through my words. And uh, with that being said, I, I just want to start off by saying, you know, I, I don't want any, any whatsoever uh, AWP bashing. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is, you know, they've, they've had a lot of great results. Um, they found people, they brought people home. A lot of you guys wouldn't even know who I was, you know, without Adventures with Purpose. I'm incredibly grateful, uh, you know, for my time with them, uh, you know, with Jared. And, you know, it was, it was, it was amazing. We really did do uh, some amazing things. But a lot of the stuff uh, that was going on behind the scenes just didn't sit right with me. Um, a lot of the you know what seemed to be people's motives also didn't sit right with me and so you know with that being said i just i just do want to say that i am thankful for my time with adventures with purpose i don't want any bashing you know i i love those guys and i hope that if anything that this will encourage them um and this will be met as some kind of encouragement to you know get them to go to the next level uh so that they can continue the work uh jared's extremely brilliant and i believe in him and, uh, and I, I love the dude, you know, I mean, I sat close to him all the time. You know, we, we were in the RV. I knew him well for two years or I got to know him, I should say. Um, anyway, but you know, with that being said, I, I'm thankful. And I also, in my opinion, um, you know, with all the money that's come in, I, I thoroughly believe that you could probably fund 10 AWPs, um, you know, we, you know, with the whole bit, you know, the trailer, the gear, just everything. Uh, I don't feel that the money is actually being used um appropriately the i feel like the image of being broke is constantly put out there and put it in the public's face you know saying hey we're broke we need tires you know we need you to send money so that we can get tires so we can go help this family um when you know from everything that i saw that's clearly not the case and i mean not that case not the case in a big way um the image of being broke it's it's being used as a vehicle in my opinion uh, to get more donations. And that's how, you know, this has mostly been funded. Um, and also, you know, shoving cameras in the face of grieving people, people who are at their lowest point in their life, and then being in a situation where they're, they're constantly seeing that image of either them or their loved one um, constantly being marketed. I, that, that to me does not sit right. Uh, that is not good with my heart whatsoever. I've been, I started doing search and recovery uh, 12 years ago when nobody was watching. Um, I actually have a heart for this. And, and I, I believe that, you know, my heart was used to, you know, put out this beautiful image to the world. But in my opinion, it's just an image. Um, so shoving the cameras in people's faces, you know, that wasn't good for me. You know, th these people are broken. They're sad. They're and then to be forced to watch time and time and time again, you know, through di various different medias, you know, their, their loved one being created as if there's some hunting trophy. Yeah, that, that did not sit well with me. Um, again, I apologize, you know, my words aren't real good. Um, you know, how, how I've seen people uh, treated in, in our group, 
uh, you know, within our group, how I saw people treated that also that was not good, in my opinion, and also the the treatment of others, um, you know, in, in my view, that, that things were not all that good. And, um, you know, I just I just wanted to say, you know, I, I've been silent, you know, for like the last, you know, month, almost five weeks. I just had to take a moment, you know, get my thoughts together, figure out, you know, how do I even, you know, present this to the world? Uh, some legal counsel was sought, um, you know, to understand, you know, the wording and how to say things correctly, um, because I don't, I don't want to find myself in a in a lawsuit. Or this has been that has been part of the reason why things um, have been so quiet on my end. Next, Chaos Divers, another search and recovery dive team that had worked closely with with AWP in the past even appearing on a few of their episodes on their channel, spoke out. This is very hard for me to say this, guys. While Chaos Divers will stay true to the followers and stay steadfast to our journey of helping and bringing home lost loved ones, we do not condone the alleged actions of others from that. I want to apologize, but this is... This has to be done. Um, with what we were made aware of, this was way back before we even knew each other. This was years and years ago. Everybody was blindsided with this. Nobody knew. I want to make a promise to you guys that Chaos Divers will continue to do what we do. Our team will continue to fight for the families who have lost their loved ones. We will continue the journey that we started. My promise to you is Chaos Divers will always be true and faithful to each and every one of you. We love you guys. And I hope you understand we will not be working with the colleagues that we worked for, worked with before. And I love you guys. Keep diving. It's not worth to stop. And there's another thing I have forgotten to mention. We will not be discussing the actions of others, nor will we disclose any personal information of that matter due to the open investigation still going on. And my heart goes out to each and every one of the victims. I'm sorry. Finally, one of the biggest faces, aside from Jared in AWP, Doug Bishop spoke out. Doug was one of the main faces representing AWP during the Kylie Rodney case. Doug owned a tow truck company in Oregon and assisted AWP and Jared in pulling out cars before he formally joined the search team as a lead diver and investigator. Everybody wants to know how I feel right now. You know, I have become the voice of our purpose. You know, what we have all come together to do. And now what has happened 30 years ago has come to light and it's being affecting everybody involved with this. <clears throat> there are contracts in place. Um, there's legal ramifications. I mean, you know, with me even speaking my opinion, but in, in, in this scenario, I gotta keep it real to everybody who loved Adventures With Purpose, who loves Adventures With Purpose, who loves what we were able to accomplish in this world. We've proven that what we have done works, it's effective, it's a need for it. You know, we tell people stories. We are the voice for the voiceless. When we are covering, covering these people's stories and going into their homes and representing them and telling their story of their missing loved ones, um, that's what it is we do. Do nothing else, you know? And I'm not just speaking for me because I'm not the only one that's involved in this. There are other people's lives who are affected by this, you know? And that's what this is about. Um, And being real is all you can be. That's all you got in this world is, is what you stand for and how you come up. Yeah, you know, um, done a lot of good in this world and everybody's got a story to tell, everyone.
absolutely everybody has a story to tell. <clears throat> you know, where I come from though, there's codes. Where I go from here, you know, I have a lot of support and I love everybody who's reaching out and just telling me and letting me know that, that um, I have your support and that you stand with me and my future is just gonna go with being real. You know, I'll continue to follow the passion that I've developed with help, helping people, with, you know, telling somebody's story. You know, I come from the towing industry and uh, now I pull cars out underwater helping families get answers. I've developed that passion. It's unfortunate that I've developed that passion and this has happened. It doesn't align with what I believe in. I have daughters, I'm a father. And I come from a real rough background and I've changed my life. I've become a really good man and uh, I've always followed the code. And uh, that code has been violated. With that being said, you know, there's a lot of legal things that have to play out and they, they got to play out, you know, um, but it doesn't involve me. It doesn't involve my name. It doesn't involve anybody else's name that's been associated with it. You know, because we've worked with a lot of people intimately. And there's a lot of people that are hurting right now. I'm just as heartbroken. I care a lot about what it is that I've been able to do. And uh, where this goes, I don't know. I don't know where this goes. My future's bright. Um, I'm gonna always be okay. My family's gonna be okay. And uh, I kept it real, you know? Um, I can't wait for lawyers to make decisions. I have to defend my family, I have to defend myself. And unfortunately, you know, that doesn't align with, with, uh, with my future. It doesn't align with me at all. Uh, none of us, you know what I mean? None of us knew any of this. And um, everybody's, I am just as shocked as everybody else. Um, it's really unfortunate and heartbreaking. <sighs> yeah, man, me, <laughs> people that know me, you guys know I'm a survivor and you know, I got nothing to hide. I'm not gonna hide nothing is what it is. Um, be positive, you know, moving forward. You know, there, there, there's people out there that have a story to tell. There's victims out there that have a story to tell. And I have been a voice for those victims. And I'm gonna continue to follow that passion. And um, I know I'll have the support to do so. Uh, I'm respected in a lot of circles with agencies. And um, those who know me, know me. And those of you who don't know me, get to know me. Um, the future's gonna be great, but uh, it, it, it won't be what it used to be, you know, we, we all got to move forward, whatever that means. I don't know. Appreciate each, each, each and every one of you. Not long after, Josh Cantu resigned. Josh was a videographer for the team. Just wanted to be real with you guys and I wanted to take a moment to try to address the issue that should have been addressed by now, which we were all hoping for better leadership in this which is why I have officially resigned from being part of the search team, which I don't need to mention. It's pretty obvious um, that I have been a part of in the past. I will live my life with integrity and morale and knowing that I did the right thing and made the right decision, which I hope you guys can support. Hey guys, Josh Cantu here with an update. Um, you guys may know me for my behind the scenes content and my video work uh, with the search team uh, for the past year and a half. Um, but there's some things that have been brought to the light that the team and I were not aware of and not aware of until very, very recently. And we're not okay with it. 
and it has created this avalanche of momentum, um, which it should have when it needed to, um, against certain things that allegedly have happened with um, someone that we trusted. Uh, it is currently Tuesday, November 8th, 11.14. Um, and I just wanted to come on here and try to tell you about Josh Cantu. So I am not going to be speaking about um, the things that one of our members and uh, may be going through. Um, because I'm not, not allowed to, which is fine. It's not my place, which is why I have officially resigned from being part of the search team, which I don't need to mention. It's pretty obvious um, that I have been a part of in the past. Um, if you are unaware of what is going on right now, that is because it has not hit the mainstream yet because it is not proven yet um, in court, which is fine. And I'm not here to tell you if it is or is not true because I personally do not know and it's not my business to talk about. But what I do know is that my reaction and the reaction of my teammates uh, are not going to be sticking around to find out. Um, we are pretty set on sticking to our morals, to our integrity, especially as, as fathers and just decent human beings. Um, but I do want to say that I do not condone the activities that have been reported. And I think that justice needs to be served. If there is a case. I'm a father of a 16 month old baby girl, beautiful baby girl, and the things that have been being said are unacceptable and unfathomable, enraging. Um, with that said, I just wanted to be real with you guys and I wanted to take a moment to try to address the issue that should have been addressed by now, which we were all hoping for better leadership in this, but it turns out the way it turns out. Um, if you're looking for an official statement, besides from Josh Cantu, don't hold your breath. And do with that as you may. So it's pretty clear in the video that there must be legal reasons why he can't even say adventures with purpose. And he's being super careful about how to approach the situation. However, he did have a community post that made a lot of people wonder if he was trying to explain what was going on, but instead using the example of a truck instead of just saying Jared or AWP. So let me bring this up on the screen and read it to you and let me know what you guys think. Some people are trying to say it's, you know, a metaphor. A few days ago, I financed a used truck, a shiny 2016 Ford F-150, a true investment into having a vehicle I can depend on and trust for my business and family. However, there were many things the dealership did not disclose that I learned after I signed for the truck. When you are under the impression of a clean title, finding out vehicle history after the fact is unacceptable and shocking. As a work truck, I will make do with the situation that I have been dealt, legally. In a pinned comment later, he says, also, to be clear about my truck post, we are all shocked and appalled by the situation as a family. We did not see any paperwork previously, and paperwork that comes into the dealership is only seen by the guy with the biggest office and his specific paperwork sorter, which is indeed not anyone that has ever been in my truck. I will no longer be doing business with this dealership, but need to be sure I double check the fine print of my truck purchase as it was very detailed. So as you can see, kind of talking about the situation, but using, you know, code words, maybe, but tell me what you guys think. 
Josh posted on his community tab that Doug was actually the first to quit and clarified that his resignation was second. Doug seemed to avoid explicitly saying that in his video since he has removed AWP from his LinkedIn and social media. Exploring with Nug, another search and recovery dive team affiliated with AWP held a live stream to discuss their position. This one was really damning, and you'll hear why in a second. Um, this is going to be a very different live because something, obviously, you guys know what's going on. If you don't, let me give you a quick glance into what's been going on but uh you can definitely google search this but last friday is when i found out that jared from adventures with purpose has been indicted on two counts of first degree felony and we're not going to use the words because i don't want to hear you know i don't know how the guidelines are with youtube but child r you know what i'm saying and uh of all things that could have happened, you know, like it's just, I don't even know. I'm because I'm actually really nervous about this live stream because this is just something totally new. It was very serious. It's very, um, it's horrible. It's like a pure act of evil. And it's just unbelievable how manipulated and how, um, shock and how like all of us were just gut punched when we found out about this. It's just, you, I couldn't even believe it, you know, but, um, see, I've already spun off control there. Well, it, like I said, in a nutshell, Jared's been indicted on two charges, very serious charges, uh, with come that, that come with some very serious time. And like so many other people that heard about this, like at, when I first heard about it, of course, I thought like, that's gotta be that's gotta be crap. Like it can't be true. There's no way this is true. This is like the worst possible thing anybody could do ever, you know, like it's just, it's a horrible thing. And so at first for a split second, I was defensive for Jared. Um, and then I quickly started noticing all the evidence, uh, with the emails that apparently he was writing back and forth to his cousin, who is the victim in all of this. Um, the, the, the first victim come to find out. And uh, once I read all of those, it there's really no way you can deny, like you can't, you can't read those and talk your way out of that. Like those are your words. And in nowhere in these emails did he deny anything. You know, it just, it's, it was, it was disgusting to read and I felt nauseated and then all the live streams started coming out about Jared being indicted. And I started, I jumped into all of these live streams and, uh, I just wanted to watch because like, I was literally in a state of just shock, like anybody else, because this, this guy that I thought I knew of, you know, like I followed, I started following him on YouTube when he was like, man, like 7,000 subs maybe. And like, I was, I only had like, maybe a thousand subs and I just started following just doing goofy river treasure videos. And, uh, that's how we connected and we, we stayed in touch ever since built a friendship through YouTube, you know, and then he had his break, you know, with videos taken off and then, you know, and our channels just kept growing and we, you know, then he got into cars and, uh, I just, I was fascinated by all of this and, you know, we stayed in touch and grew and grew and stayed close and, and he shared secrets um, work related secrets towards, uh, you know, like how to pull cars out, what he's learned, dive and stuff, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. What, you know, and he taught me, you know, about, um, you know, SEO search engine optimization about YouTube and how it's a search engine, you know, keywords, all this stuff, all these little things, you know, to help you grow. And, uh, so I always, I looked at Jared as a, a friend, a mentor. Um, you know, I, I thought I was duped. And I thought he was a straight up guy. And uh, I know that the word alleged is getting thrown around. And I know everybody has their opinion. Everybody has their beliefs and you're allowed to. And that's great. Um, I believe that, you know, the whole innocent until proven guilty thing only goes so far when you pretty much have a written confession back and forth between the victim and the predator. 
I don't see how that, I don't see that. Like, and then the fact that he's been quiet, you know, I haven't heard a peep out of this guy. Um, his team, former team came out today and very emotional videos came out. They're trying their best to explain this, you know, what's going on and what they're doing. They're locked up in some crap um, contracts, which I think is, is, is useless as the paper they're probably written on for the main fact that I'm sure there's no fine print in these, uh, there's, there's, a, there's no way a contract can pr protect somebody from talking about criminal activity. I couldn't imagine where a contract would hold up in court, you know? Um, so to like, but I understand why they're not talking, you know, like the, the whole under contract thing, you know, these are working class, these are, these are real humans, you know, with real families, got to pay the bills. And, um, and if they did get sued because of this breach of contract, then, you know, it's, it's just more money that they would have to spend on lawyers and stuff like that. So I get it. I get why they're talking about it. And obviously this live stream is going to be me rambling and just spinning off because essentially I just wanted to, I wanted to reach out to you guys as everybody should in this community who has been part of searching for missing people who have worked with Jared, who have um, really anything, any knowledge in this or, or have no, no knowledge of this, but just want to share their input on it. Um, they should speak out. Here's the thing. The, the whole, the proof thing is where I'm like the emails, that's all the proof I needed to be, you know, convinced that this is not fabricated. And on top of that, um, somebody also said, well, these emails could be fabricated. You know, somebody could have wrote these, Jared, Jared couldn't, have, you know, they, he didn't write these stuff like that. Um, but Jared has already, um, said that his official statement is uh, the emails back and forth between him and his cousin. Um, I got that text from him because I first, I reached out to him and I was like, hey, I heard about what's going on. You know, I want you to know, because this is before I knew anything and I thought he was my friend. So I told you, know, I sent him a text. I was like, hey, I heard what's going on, dude. I got your back if you need anything. You know, that was me, my first reaction, because I thought maybe I had a friend getting railroaded, but that's me jumping the gun too fast before I knew what the hell was going on. And that was dumb on my part. But he did write back, very generic message saying, my official statement is what I wrote back and forth to my cousin. That's public on Reddit. So anybody could read these. Okay, so if Jared said his official statement was the emails, number one, but number two, Jared says in there that everyone at AWP knows and that anyone has access to read those emails because he doesn't filter his personal emails and has nothing to hide. I'm going to call BS on that because... Clearly, nobody knew, or they're just really good liars. I mean, if they did, they definitely all deserve Oscar awards for the videos that we just watched. I believe that they had no idea, and I think that it could have just been a little detail added into the email to make the cousin think that there was no point in her telling anyone, or of how other people knew and forgave him, so he, the she should too. Maybe it was just a sales tactic of his. I don't know. I mean, I just, I don't know. So after Doug, Josh, and Exploring with Nug made statements, Sam had a live stream discussing his thoughts and wanted to make the record crystal clear on whether he knew or not. Um, I've been getting a lot of people, uh, you know, reaching out to me, uh, asking me questions, um, you know, all, all types of questions. But I've also had a lot of people reach out to me and, uh, and apologize. Uh, as many of you guys know, um, over a year ago, I stepped away from Adventures with Purpose. Um, it was a very tough time for me. You know, I loved helping the people, but I just hated what was going on behind the scenes. Um, yeah, and with that being said, um, these things that were brought to light, uh, or that have been brought forth this weekend, I didn't know about them until Saturday, this Saturday, just like many of you guys. Um, I left due to, you know, the way that people were treated in other ways. I left because of the way that I was treated. Um, There's many things that didn't sit well with me. With that being said, uh, you know this th this last year had been extremely hard for me. Um, I experienced a lot of hate uh, from you know the the mob, the mob that came after me. Uh, whether it was you know and you know through, through emails and texts and messing with my people, um, I actually feel you know like a big weight has been lifted off of me because I now now I no longer have that pressure. Um, you know, a lot of you guys are upset and upset with yourselves uh, and you know and 
and I'm saying, you know, don't be, because I was fooled too. I was duped as well. Um, I just happened to be closer to the individual. And with that being said, I was able to see it, you know, the character much sooner than you guys were. Um, yeah, um, this is a very, uh, you know, very, very quick uh, live stream. And, you know, for, for those of you guys who have been, you know, reaching out to me, apologizing, you know, saying that you're sorry. Hey, sorry, Sam, we doubted you. You know, hey, we treated you bad. You know, or we, we, you know, we crucified you. Um, I just, I just want to say, hey, we're cool. You got, you guys didn't know. You know, you guys are forgiven. It's, it's, it's you know, water under the bridge. It's fine. Um, you know, the, the biggest issue uh, at this moment, um, or, or rather, where I'd like to, you know, deflect the attention to, is to, you know, the, the survivors um, that have come forward and may continue to come forward. I encourage you to come forward if you haven't already. Um, you know, you have many, many people that are supporting you and that you don't know about. Um, you know, we stand with victims. Uh, we, we stand with the survivors, rather. I prefer to call them survivors. Um, you know, and me, I, I do not condone violence. I do not condone, I'm going to say the R word to everyone. I don't condone none of that. I am not under contract of any, any shape or kind whatsoever. I mean, this is all me. This channel belongs to me. I'm not answering to anybody. And I do not, under any circumstances, condone of any kind. That is That, that doesn't happen here. It doesn't fly. Um, I, I'm really upset about it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, just to... Yeah, I'm upset about the whole thing. Uh, you know, just to, to have been, you know, that close um, to, you know, the, the character... Uh, you know, and then getting to know him, um, you know, I, I found Jared, Jared Lysak, to be repulsive. Um, that absolutely repulsive. I, I didn't know how, how deep it was or, or what it was because we never had that conversation. We weren't just out there driving. And I wasn't like, hey, Jared, you like kids? That didn't happen. Uh, like, do you have, tell me about your shady past. That didn't happen. I, I was unaware of these things. Uh, I left because of what I had saw and seen on my trips, um, happening in the interactions there. Uh, my understanding from what I've done or the homework that I've done is this stuff uh, has came or started to come out uh, last February. I, I, w I left. We're going to pause right there for a second. I'm sorry. Did he just say February? Um, had I known anything of this kind, I would have left immediately. Um, and, and with that being said, I just want to let you guys know a lot of people are looking at me. Sam, is this why you left? Uh, no, this isn't why I left. But had I known, I would have gotten out much sooner and the fireworks would have been much bigger. Um, with that being said, I want you guys to know that I wasn't the first person to leave. Um, this is a story that you guys don't know. Um, actually, my son, Kyler, he came out on a trip with us and uh during that time, and he, he was just so, I don't know, I'll, I'll, you can come in here, I'll introduce you real quick. I'm going to let you guys, let him tell his story. Um, we're actually going to go, and uh, yeah, he's going to tell his story. I'm, I'm going to wrap up my piece. He's going to tell his story over on his channel. So mods, if you're here, go ahead and drop the link. Um, this is a separate thing, and I just want Kyler to make sure that he feels comfortable on his own channel where he can talk and he can be freely or speak freely because there's a lot of things where he was like, you know, Dad, I don't, Dad, I don't know if I can say that on your channel. But we're going to go over to his channel. He's going to speak his piece. He's going to speak his mind um, because he actually left during a trip. Um, he was the canary in the coal mine. Um, he, we were on a trip and he left. Um, he, he, you know, he said, and I, I'm going to let you, him tell his story. Uh, and that really just like threw, was a rude awakening. It was a, I don't mean rude awakening. It was a, an awakening for me. Um, you know, so a lot of people are like, oh, Sam, you know, you, you were the one that, you know, that, that called it out first. Actually, it was Kyler. And then Kyler, um, you know, me and him, we talked about it. Uh, I was already, you know, losing um, interest, you know, with Jared and with the, with the pro or with AWP um, due to Jared. I loved helping the people. So I was always torn, you know, I wanted to help people, but I, I just, I just couldn't uh, promote this guy anymore. As many of you guys know, I've said uh, that I have over like 40 episodes worth of content uh, from my trips on adventures with purpose i never made those videos because i didn't want to promote this individual i seen his character i saw who he was and for my morals the things that are coming out now not not meaning the uh the the um the the uh you know the indictment indictment 
I didn't know about that, but other things you guys are, are learning about him, you know, from different channels and different people that have uh, that have spoken and came forward. Um, anyway, so, so so guys, this is my son. Um, I had again, I had no idea about these or about these things that have come forward, you know. And to the um, you know the survivors, you know, we stand with you. We stand with you. We stand with you in a big way. Um, and if you guys have been affected, you know, be it this huge and egregious or, or small, um, you know, come forward, you know, speak your peace, speak your mind, you know, just get it off your heart. Like Sam said, Kyler has been waiting two years to say all of this. So I on purpose did not watch um, Adventures with Purpose videos before going there because I didn't want to know these guys, meaning, you know, Dan and Jared as being YouTubers. I just wanted to meet them. Yeah, you didn't want to have a preconceived notion. I didn't want any preconceived notions because I didn't, one, I honestly wasn't really that into true crime videos. And then two, I just really wanted to meet them. So I didn't really have much, um, you know, whatever. So I meet everybody. Everybody seems kind of decent, you know, at first. It's just, you know, whatever. So there's one day I don't remember. It was like a couple of days into the trip where... Also, I'm going to say all this stuff I'm saying is alleged and my opinion. So a couple of days into the trip. So I've been kind of getting to know everybody a little. And I remember uh, Jared was in... The, oh, like I said, this is all my opinion. But Jared was in the front seat and he was driving. And so I decided I was going to go up and talk to him and pick his brain a little bit because he was an interesting person to me. Like, why wouldn't he be? He has a YouTube channel. He has all this stuff. So I go and I start to talk to him. And one question in particular, and what oh, I remember asking was, I asked him why he got into YouTube. And now most people, when they get into YouTube, they say, oh, it's because I like something or, oh, it's because I was doing something already and thought it'd be fun to share it with an audience. But he told me that he got into it for money. And I was like, what? And he's like, well, I knew it was profitable. And so for me, that was kind of a weird thing, but I didn't think too much about it. You know, I was kind of like, like, it's a little, you know, whatever, but that's not that big of a deal. So that was kind of the first red flag. And then the second red flag was hearing how he spoke about his fans and the nature he spoke about his fans and the um, some of the other, I'm not going to mention any names, but other people that were coming out to help us. He was really t speaking about them as if they weren't humans or people. And I recall him saying, he said it in a joking tone, but it didn't come off as a joke to me. He said that, if, they, if people didn't give his money to him, they would just be wasting it anyways. On something else. Yeah, on something else. And that was something he just said. And it's an older elderly couple. And we go and tell them that we were unable to find their son and that we'd have to either, I don't remember, we were going to try again or something. I don't remember. It was something. I was there and I was told... <sighs> It's hard for me to even talk about, but the old man was crying and I didn't film. I did not want to go because I was helping filming. I did not want to go up close to him and I, I turned the camera away because he was crying and I didn't want anything to do with it. And then I got accosted for missing the what was called the money shot. And I wanted to speak slightly to me getting away. This was something like that. When I like the like when I thought about it, it sounded amazing because one I like scuba diving, that's like some of my passion. If I could do that professionally somehow, whether that's for YouTube or something, that'd be a dream of mine. Um, it involves helping people. It was just there were so many things about this that sounded amazing to me, and I just was like, you know, I couldn't overlook how he was and how things were going. So it wasn't an easy like. It was easy, but it wasn't, like, something I wanted to do. Like, it was, like, I have to. That's why I just left the way I did, because it was, like, I have to leave. Just, just pull off the band-aid and leave, yeah? Yeah. On the video, he has his own comment pinned, saying, For those questioning why I decided to come out now about this, after witnessing people attempt to play off the heinous crimes he has been indicted on as just the acts of a 17 year old who is now a good person, I felt it was important to share with you my experience and how I witnessed him behave in more recent times and highlight that he had victims in other ways too. 
Also, I wanted to make clear that me leaving had nothing to do with these current charges and that I had no prior knowledge of them. I ask that we all as a community continue to support and send love to the survivors of this situation and try our best to make this a safe space for people to speak their truth. More members of AWP have now resigned, totaling five at the time of this recording. Hello, I'm Nick Rin. It's Wednesday, November 9th. Just so everyone knows, as of yesterday, uh, I've formally resigned from my former place of employment working for the search team. After hearing these allegations and listening to the information that's out there and what's available, I'm not okay with this. This is not right. And I can't sit by and support this and wait till lawyers make decisions and people wait to make statements. I, I just can't support it. It's not me. It's not who I am. And I don't want to be a part of it. And quite frankly, if these allegations are true, I hope justice gets served. It's a formal update on the current situation that I am in. I would like to firstly say that I will not be answering or making any comments on the current situation of Adventures with Purpose, but I would like to speak about what I am going to do and what I am going to do moving forward. Moving forward, I would like everyone to know that I am no longer a part of Adventures with Purpose. I have left the company because of personal reasons for uh, moral obligation. Moving forward, I will pursue my creative passion when it comes to filming, storytelling, and the creative de desire to continue documentary work along with some other freelance stuff. Hey everyone, um, I'm currently out in the middle of nowhere sailing. Um, I can't disclose like where I'm at or what exactly I'm doing, um, but uh, you know, it's my responsibility to speak on the topic at least a little bit, or at least just give a statement. Um, so I, I'm not very well known as much as, as some of the other members of uh, uh, the AWP team or former members of the AWP team, but um, I wanted to take at least a moment to just say that um, I stepped away. I, I've resigned from AWP due to moral obligations, due to, um, you know, a, a lack of proper leadership, um, and due to, uh, you know, a, just needing to do what's right. Nick Wren was the diver who confirmed Kylie Rodney was in her vehicle underwater. Nick and Carson also made multiple appearances on different channels to discuss the Kylie Rodney case back in September. So while all of this was happening, Jared's sister, Jessica, and cousin appeared on a couple of live streams in the chat and even on a couple of panels. The cousin has been very forthcoming and brave, and honestly, I believe her. Many people online and on Reddit have wondered why she waited 30 years and speculated about her motives. Honestly, it's a fair question, but most of the speculation is around wondering if she's just doing this for money. The cousin has repeatedly stated that she is not after any money. She wants punishment and justice for what she says happened. Not only that, but she isn't suing him. This is not a civil suit. This is a fel felony criminal indictment with two serious charges. The charges are being brought by the state of Utah. However, of course, people are always going to speculate that things are motivated and driven by money, especially when GoFundMes are created. And Jared's sister created a GoFundMe page with the goal set to $1 million. When I first saw this, I didn't know what to think, but I'll be honest, it felt a little alarming. It doesn't make her claims untrue by any stretch, but it did feel a little bizarre, and it's unclear why she needs money for a lawyer or for protection. Is she planning on filing charges? Is there threats of retaliation for her speaking so publicly? And I'm just gonna say it, I wish she hadn't done this because it without a doubt fueled the fire of suspicion for people who doubted her story. After it was posted, it was updated two hours later and Jessica apologized for making the GoFundMe and stated that the cousin had no idea she was doing this and that she shouldn't have done that before talking with her. But she still left the GoFundMe up. 
and now the GoFundMe has been shut down for several days. Cheska posted on Facebook to clarify her intentions with the GoFundMe. Since the GoFundMe was shut down, Cheska has posted some Facebook Live videos asking her mom and dad to speak up. This beautiful thing right here. I hardly ever wear jewelry unless I'm out, like on stage and dressing and acting all weird and stuff. Um, but um, that's from my mom. My mom gave me that years ago. And um, so I put it on. And I would like to challenge my mom. Hey, mom, this video is dedicated to you. Um, I know that somewhere in your heart that you... Um, that you believe in the Lord. I, I know that you know what's right and wrong. I know that you know a lot of things and more things than I know about. And it would be awesome if you came forward and it would be awesome if you could talk some of the others and you know who I'm talking about into coming forward as well, because right now there is a lot of support for the victims. There are a lot of people that are coming out saying that they are also afraid of Jared. Um, you are not alone. Um, it's time that he stops manipulating you. So it's, it's time that you stop living in fear of the wrath of Jared, like everyone else. And it's time that you become a voice. Then in another, she called out Jared's wife. She also commented that she was disgusted after she saw an old video from AWP where Jared tried to prank Sam with their other sister. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Oh my gosh, are you guys adventurers with purpose? Uh -huh. Jared yeah. and Dan, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, you guys are adventurers with purpose? Heck yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you're Sam? Huh? You're Sam, right? Yeah, I'm Oh Sam. my god, it's so nice to meet you. I can't believe it. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah, nice to meet you. You're like my favorite. He does all the talking. You just yeah. stand there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's like, you're like every girl's dream. Dang it. Yeah, you just, you're just cool. quiet. Yeah. Oh my god. All right, what are you doing? Like, are you... I'm, I'm, I'm shooting a show oh. right now. We're shooting a show. We're down here running the bayou. Are you going to have like a couple minutes or something that yeah. we can like go talk? Uh, no, no, we're, we're oh. shooting right now. I mean, you can, you can hang for a few, but... Really? Well, I mean like, can I steal you for a minute? No. <laughs> you can't be stolen. Why? <laughs> Seriously? Just like a quick minute. I'm on my lunch break. I call you guys. Oh, okay, I gotta lock this door real quick. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, I'm just on my lunch break right now, but... <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. I got a girlfriend, too. You have so. a girlfriend, babe? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, I, 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 I got a girlfriend, though. It's not even like a quick, like... No, no. Really? No, no, no. Oh, my gosh. Well, like, just can I get one more hug, at least? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like... <laughs> All right. Oh, man. All right. All right, but no, like, seriously? No, seriously, I mean, yeah. I, oh, my place is right up the street. No, no, we're, no, I got a girlfriend. Thank you, though. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, no, but, I mean, come on. No. You don't want to show fan appreciation? No, like, nothing no, yeah, like that. Yeah, nothing like that, yeah. Well, seriously. Yeah. Like, like, what kind of fan appreciation are you talking about? Well, I mean, like, you have an RV. <laughs> no, no, no. The I'm car, good. I mean, no, seriously, no. there's hotels okay, right so, there. So, yeah. so he does have a girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. But let, let's just take this. How discreet are you? I mean, very. I wouldn't say anything. No, no, I'm good. You know, like yeah, that whole Vegas no. thing, like. No, no. I'm not. I now I talk a lot. Yeah, yeah. You do. Uh huh. Now you said that. Did you do like him more? I do like Sam. Yeah. What about me? I mean, you're second best. So, so I say, we cut cameras. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Is the RV unlocked? Like, like, are you up for it? Yeah, let's do it. Like, did you guys set this up? <laughs> Is this real life? <laughs> I'm like in shock. You guys, that's gotta be a prank or something. You guys, I'm pretty sure you, you set the pranks up early somehow. Sam! Yeah? Let me introduce you to my sister. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the prank wars begin oh, no, right like, now, buddy. Like, no, no, I believe in, I believe in you, I believed in you. Like, I was like, I was like, there's no way. Let me introduce everybody to my little sister, Rochelle, who lives in Houston. Jared's a good dude, and that would not have happened. Jared would have been like, yo, yo, he said back off. He, he, he would have done the stiff arm. I, mean, I was doing the stiff arm, but he would have came in with two stiff arms. I, Jared's a good brother. <laughs> Everyone close to AWP or Jared, either currently or in the past, seemed devastated by the news. We can all decide whether we believe these guys or not for ourselves, and I do. Personally, I don't think they had any idea about this. They were probably as shell-shocked as the rest of us. 
for all five members of AWP that recently resigned, I can't imagine how they felt. They literally gave up their livelihoods and income because they could no longer be a part of something they felt wasn't aligned with their values and morals. And I respect that. If something changes and if they're you know, if emails surface between any of the members and Jared or text messages or Jared tries to throw any of them under the bus saying they knew about it, we'll see. But my first inclination right now is that they didn't know. After all the resignations and statements, big news and media companies such as People, Oxygen, and Law and Crime have now reported on the indictment. Going back to one of the things that Sam said earlier, he mentioned that this had been going on or Jared had known about this coming out since February. Now, I don't know how I would act in that situation, but I don't think staying silent for nine months and not telling anyone beforehand would be the move, especially since the emails he wrote, which I guess is his public statement, 100% said that people around him knew. I'm genuinely hoping for his wife and children's sake, they weren't caught off guard by this. I can't imagine if they were blindsided by this. And there is a rumor that I do believe since it's from a good source that apparently not only did Jared's wife know about this, but that she was there when Jared apologized to his aunt, the cousin's mom, like back when Jared was 16 years old. So I don't know if that's true. That's just a rumor, but they have been together since high school. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Make your own decisions there. Anyways, whether people knew this was going to come out or not, Jared knew. And it's no secret that businesses can get destroyed when something like this comes out. So what does this mean for the future of Adventures with Purpose? During a live stream back in October of 2022, Doug introduced Peter Coughlin as the new CEO of Adventures with Purpose. Standing with me, I have Lindsay and Jacob with Chaos Divers, as well as Peter Coughlin, who is our CEO here at Adventures with Purpose. Since then, Peter has removed any affiliation from his LinkedIn page. However, even though Jared isn't CEO, he still is the owner. Also, there is a big misconception by a lot of people that AWP is a nonprofit 501c3, and it's not. AWP is owned by an LLC called Trevari Media. Jared and his wife are the sole owners of AWP. Since the news broke, AWP has lost around 30,000 subscribers on YouTube and has restricted comments on their Instagram page. A lot of people were surprised when the AWP YouTube channel posted yet another video, though, appearing to carry on business as usual. And comments on those videos have also been heavily moderated and, you know, people are getting delete happy. Josh, the videographer that resigned, said on a community post that there is no coming back from this for AWP. And in Jared's own words, he doesn't have skeletons in his closet or anything to hide. I assume he was talking about the bankruptcies, the SEC filings, and his criminal record from the mid to late 90s. Those charges include fleeing or attempting to elude police in 1993, reckless driving in 1993, pointing a firearm in 1997, unlawful use of a weapon in 1998, and several other traffic violations. So if he has nothing to hide regarding the charges on his indictment, why is it just now coming out? And why are we not hearing from him directly? You are a truth teller, right? The good, the bad, the ugly, you'll always be transparent, right? Where's your truth right now? On November 9th, more court documents were filed in the case. The documents showed that Jared has retained counsel, as he should because he is facing several severe charges, and he also made a request for all the discovery that the prosecution has. Additionally, he was granted the ability to appear in court remotely, so we will now have to wait as this pans out to see what happens next. Like I said before, his first court date is set for November 30th. It's going to be interesting to see where this goes. It's going to be interesting to see what new details come to light, what kind of punishment can be enforced even though the statute of limitations does not expire, and how this is handled. I think, too, although there may no, not be a future for AWP as AWP, is there a future in some capacity of the skills and the talent that these other men carry? Because they were bringing so much good and so much closure to families that it's a shame that because of Jared's disgusting behavior and history and all of this, that that would ruin that and that that would take away from other good people in society's, you know, ability to heal and get closure for family members. So I hope that there's some sort of balance here or maybe that somebody comes along and funds a new project for these guys and that they can continue doing the good work that they do. But as for Jared, I mean... I just got to say, 
I, I know there's always been a lot of talk about him kind of being a creep and a slime ball and after money and that being his primary focus. But now every time I see a photo of him, he just looks even creepier than ever before. Just like something like dead in the eyes, like creepy little like nose and face, almost like a, like who is that little short guy from Despicable Me? Is that the movie I'm thinking of? I think it is the guy with the suit, like the bald head and like he just kind of has like a scary little face. I've never seen the movie, so maybe he's a good guy, but you, you know what I'm talking about? I just see that every time I see it and it's unnerving. So... Anyway, guys, I wanted to just kind of come on here and have a frank conversation with you about this case. I wanted to just talk through everything. I know so many of you have been interested, especially since he was on my channel at one point. I've now, of course, as I mentioned, privated that video. And I'll keep you updated. And I'm going to be as transparent as I can. I still am going to try to be as careful as I can because he is probably going to be trying to earn a lot of money for all of his legal fees and um, go after people for libel and slander. And so I'm going to make sure I'm dropping the allegedly and the in my opinion as much as I can, but I will do my best to be as transparent with information, regardless how graphic, horrible it is with you guys. So check back. Um, I, don't, I won't be doing video updates every day like a lot of channels are because I just feel like that sometimes can create and incite more drama and rumors and it can get things that cases out of hand quickly. But I will jump on here. Um, every now and then with a full video kind of like what we did today of like all of the comprehensive overviews the updates and um, everything that we could just talk through together and then if there's one-offs in between of course so as always just check back for updates thanks again for tuning in I know it was a long one I know this case has really upset all of us I'm hopeful that any survivors of Jared's not only just the family members but anybody else out there I hope that they all have the courage to continue coming forward to gain strength through this and get the justice that they deserve. It doesn't matter if this pain and suffering was inflicted on them 70 years ago or seven seconds ago. They deserve justice. Nobody should have to go through any of that, especially, especially by somebody you trust and love and look up to and that's a family member. It's just the worst type of betrayal. I don't care if they had generations that did it, that's no excuse. It's no excuse. And especially even if you tried to use that as an excuse and like walk and like talk it out and walk it away or whatever the expression is. I don't even know. I can't think straight right now. It's like the fact that in his emails from as recently as this year, he wasn't taking any accountability and he was trying to make himself the victim and gaslight it and just like, you know, make it all about him. It's just sick. It's sick. So anyways, sorry for the long winded outro there, guys, but I'll keep you updated. So again, make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already so that you get notified of those updates. Thanks again, guys, and until the next one, stay safe.